do you have a PCB with a damage trace like this one? You are in luck, I will show you my way to repair it step by step with lots of details. Let's jump right in. Ok guys, now let's see how we can fix that. Let's the board and the error you've seen a moment ago is this one over here. You see it's not very big, so if you have very good eyes you could probably do it without any magnification, but I doubt it to be honest. So you should at least use a loop or something or better uh, microscope camera to have a better view. So you should use a magnification to be honest. So that's number one. Second, of course, we need solder, solder wire. Sure, we need to connect it. And what we connect it or what we want to connect is we will use a strain of these tiny wire. Of course, we need something to grip it. So I would recommend a fine tweezer. Yeah, if you have a, such a price, precise one, you can also just use a normal one. But yeah, that's sometimes a hit and miss. But yeah, it will work, but it's just a bit more fiddly. What else do we have? You might wonder what that's. So that's also just a tweezer, but this tweezer over here is uh, yeah, a ceramic one. And I like to use these here are nano cubes, and these are little sponges, and they are very good to clean stuff. So let's say you have flux on your board, and if you have no idea what flux is, I recommend watching this video over here, and I show you exactly how you can make your own flux or what's flux in general. You can grab one of these and then I take isopropyl alcohol. That's this here. That's magical for cleaning stuff. I highly recommend having some IPA around, dipping it and cleaning your PCB with it. So that works very well. You will see it in a minute. So, but that's, yeah, optional. What's not optional is having a blade. Or an exactor knife for one thing or for two things sorry um, the first thing is we want to cut the strain when we are ready soldering or when we're done with solder to cut it and remove the uh, the axis and we needed to scrape away some of the remaining traces on both sides you will see it in a moment if you want to go fancy you can use this here this is a grinding pan and there are several speeds you hear it and that's a very pointy tip. It comes with several year tips. I like to have this pointy one. That makes it very easy to yeah uh, scrape away some of the traces. If you have not something like this and you're into this electronic stuff, I highly recommend it. And by the way, all the equipment is in the video description. Um, yeah, okay, so that's optional. Um, that's also optional. But yeah, I think you should do it. Um, that's solar mask. Now you might ask, what the heck is solar mask? Let me show you. Solar mask, and this uh, this here is the green one, so it's a green PCB. It's green solar mask, but yeah, the color doesn't matter to be honest. It's just it's more beautiful when you have the same color. Um, this here is for protecting our new bridge we will make with the wire and this solar mask can be activated with a UV lamp and then it will harden and protect you know, the stuff that's underneath it. Yeah, I would recommend it. You don't need it, but um, you can also place a tape or something. So remember, the best tools are the tools you have at hand. Huh? But um, yeah, consider doing it like this. Oh yeah, and to apply it we will use this little brush here, so the solar mask. So let's have a look under the trusted microscope camera though that you have an excellent view. Okay, here we are. And you know what? I have here a timer. So let's start with this timer here so that we have a better idea um, of yeah how long it will take us to repair it. I mean, I will go a little bit slower that makes sense because I want to show you how it works, but you get the idea, I guess. And go. Okay, so the first step I told you was to scrape away some 
of the sides. So this side and this side, because that here is broken and we want to restore this as you can see. So let's use this wonderful pen and see. Like so. Brilliant. So that's it. That easy. And now the other side, but this time with the little exactor knife, just to prove you that's also possible. This one. But first, let's clean it. So that's where these little cubes come into play. So let me grab some isopropyl alcohol on it. And we just gently swipe over it. And we're good to go. Of course, you can also just use some old school cut and swaps, but sometimes, yeah, you have those little strains or these, these the wool, I think it's wool or the cotton strains, um, yeah, hanging in some pins in the cell, so that's why I don't like it. These cubes are much better, if you ask me. So now we do the same, but just scrape it this time. I need a, need a better angle. And yeah, it works, but it's, yeah, I think it's a bit more difficult. But to be honest, that's, it's fine. Yes, yeah, you can see it takes longer than with the pen. And you must be a bit more careful. Well, let's see if it's enough. Let's grab this cube. I think it's enough IPA on it. Yeah, that looks fine. But you see the right side that's much more precise than the left one. Okay. So, now to the second step. Let's try our self-made flux. Not sure if it will work as good as the, yeah, flux paste. We will see. Just a quick note, my first DIY flux from the last video did not fully dissolve in the isopropyl alcohol, so I added more IPA to thin it down, but now the effect is weaker, keep that in mind. This one still works, but not perfectly, more like so-so, you will see it in a moment. Flux is always a good idea because it helps the solar flow, and you see there are some solids from this flux, that's because I had, um, yeah, too much rosin in my mixture, but yeah, watch the other video and you will know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, now let's see, we need to tin these traces left and right, we just scrape the way. Yeah. Let's give it another drop. Okay, now let's clean it again. Okay, now we have our pre-tinned traces. Okay, now to the strings, let's see. Let me cut it. I 
So, uh, yeah, a side cutter would also be handy, but you can use a scissor or something. So, uh, yeah, I forgot this in the equipment section in the beginning. So now we have here this little, little strain. Will it focus? Yes, it will. Okay, now let's go under our microscope again. Here we are, and here is our strain. How? Oh, okay, well, it's longer than I expected it. But that doesn't matter. Let's give the flux a good shake again. Another drop of our sulfate flux. Put these pasty solid stuff inside. <laughs> So now let's see. Okay, now it's tacked with one of the sides. We just solder this on one side. Now I will grab my my tweezer. And so we saw the other slide, like so. Okay. Now we cut the axis. Okay. And you see, now we have a bridge. So to prove that we have a valid connection, let's do a continuity test. And you hear when we put these together, it will beep. So when we go on this side, on the other side, you hear it is beeping. Nice. So, fine. Okay, so 10 minutes or 11 minutes right now. But yeah, that's of course with yeah, telling you much about it. So I would say when you don't have to explain something, it, it's just, yeah, half of it. Okay, now do the important part, the protection. Yeah, maybe I can use the other lights now. Like so. Yeah, with the other lights, you see, it is more reflective. So let's use another fresh cube with isopropyl alcohol and clean it again. And let's also use just a cotton swab. So let's shake this. Yeah, let's use something here from the from the lid. Just a bit. Could be already too much. And let's apply it. A thin layer, I will go a bit wider. Because it doesn't hurt to have it a bit more spreaded. Yeah, and here you see again why I use the other light. What I also like, like to uh, have at hand are just bottle caps, yeah, to clean such things, for example. So now you see 
here is the UV um, silver mask on it and I want to clean this little brush so I just put some IPA in it like so and now I can just clean it inside this little bottle cap or when you want to mix something together some resin or whatever you want to do just use a bottle cap and after afterwards you can yeah toss it yeah let me switch the lights again all the precious time on the timer but yeah okay so these are the other lights and you see there are much less reflections now we need the uv lamp for this i will use this one here you can use any one you like and when i click it you see it's turning on so we place it over it and i think i will do two two runs of it so i think they are 15 seconds or something or 20 seconds so in total yeah 30 or 40 seconds first pass then second pass okay and we should be done where are we here we are and what i would like or what i like to do after this is to give it a short burst with some heat just to cure it but you can also use just a hairdryer or something so you don't need a hot air soldering gun for this okay and you see that looks much better now okay so this took us around yeah 18 minutes it sounds a lot but to be honest i mean i um I was very slow I showed you something very carefully and we have the, the hardening time and stuff so um, I would say you can make it yeah half the time or at least 10 minutes that should be no problem um, yeah I hope you liked it and if you're interested in how you can make your own flux watch my last video you'll find it over there and as always happy tinkering